So this is going to be a walkthrough of the weapon modifier corruption part that I've been working on for all Kilton medals. So I'm going to load up a save from right after getting the paraglider and then walk through the, the steps for getting the Omega Bow. So Plateau is um, mostly the same Plateau. Um, you're going to activate time of day because uh, Kilton, you need to meet Kilton at night. And then out of SOR, you're going to pick up a tree branch um, and the woodcutter's ask, axe. Um, I think generally you just need a two-handed weapon and the axe is kind of convenient. You're going to chop some trees, I guess, at some point. Um, but uh, it's important to have a one-handed weapon, um, and that's what the tree branch is, is there for, and then um, two weapons total. Uh, Traveler's bow and the five arrows you normally get at the Temple of Time, you actually want to get rid of all of your arrows um, during the setup. So you'll see here, um, I only have three arrows left after Plateau. Um, one is obvious. Uh, for the boulder launch, I shot the arrow, didn't pick it back up. Um, the other arrow I actually used to kill uh, the Boko at the bottom of the temple of, uh, not temple, the, the plateau tower um, to get the Boko shield. And the reason why I picked up the Boko shield is because it's a five durability shield that I know can be undamaged. Um, it's possible to get through plateau with the pot lid at five durability um, or higher, but it's not always guaranteed depending on um, what strats you use. So I decided to kill the Boko at the bottom of the tower to get the, the shield, just to have that. Um, you need a shield with five dur durability at least. And I don't want to use the potlet in Kakariko because we want to pick that up after WOMC is complete and uh, to be used for the rest of the run. Um, and then as for food, five Hylian shrooms, um, six spicy peppers. Um, six spice. You need all six spicy peppers. Uh, don't eat the spicy peppers. Uh, they are important um, to fill up our food inventory, um, since that's a key part of WMC. Um, Hylian shrooms. You just need three or more, um, so we can afford to eat one or two. Um, we do want three Hyrule bass, and you get these. Um, at the little pond that's at the bottom of the Great Plateau Tower. So um, the major difference in this plateau versus sort of like a regular, um, let's say like the All Shrines Plateau, is that after bombs, you BLSS to the pond, grab three Hyrule Bass, run out, uh, kill the Boko for the Boko shield, and then activate the tower. And then kind of pretty much the rest of the plateau is uh, the same. Okay, uh, I have the steak here. Uh, oh, the, the steak is actually pretty important. Don't eat the steak. Um, the steak is important because it's a it's a stackable food. Like you can have stacks of steaks, uh, more than one in in one slot, and that's important for WMC. And then uh, slate orbs glider. Okay, so that's plateau, and after plateau, we're going to do a BLSS to Kakariko. Um, I like to do uh, the BLSS straight out of here. And we're just heading to Kakariko right now. Um, the first thing we're going to do in Kakariko is activate Talon Egg. Uh, we don't need to talk to Imba, so no need to skip Paya here. So generally, um, I aim... You see sort of like a triangular... Oh, nice speed cap right away. Um, you see like the triangular rock that I'm gonna like float right above. Um, that's usually what I aim for. And I'm gonna be actually aiming to like collide with one particular feature in the rock here. Um, a little left of it. Uh, should be fine. Yeah. Okay. 
activate Talon Egg here. Um, I'm going to be using the save state here just to... Uh, in case I mess up. Um, next thing we're going to do is uh, go get the Frenic Bow. Uh, the Frenic Bow is the main thing that we are going to... Um, it's the bow that we're going to corrupt. Oh! Almost... Almost lost the Frenic Bow. Usually I like, try to stand in front of it. Um, getting the blue nightshade there was uh, intentional. Um, it's going to be one of our scrap materials. Uh, here I'm going to eat one pepper so I can do this wind bomb. Usually I aim at this tower and do a quick turn because we're going to go to the fairy fountain. And our goal here is three fairies, um, a bunch of blue nightshade, and then three in Dora carrots. So one, two, three, and there's an Endora Carrot here behind this big tree, an Endora Carrot, or two Endora Carrots here, um, and that's it with the Berry Fountain. I stand here, aim to the right of these three trees, we're going up to the hill. And just using one, um, uh, just using one fairy right there. I just need two, um, to go into the setup. Uh, the silent shroom there is okay. Um, not really necessary. And I get the set up there, and then we're going to go to the castle balcony now uh, for our ancient arrows. And that'll the ancient arrows will basically complete our gathering portion. Um, for aiming here, you'll notice the there's a pillar that's uh, closest to us right now. Um, the, the castle balcony is to the left of it. Yeah, this, this pillar right here. Um, aim to the left of that. Here. You're gonna have to wait for, um the chest to load anyway. So I'm going to shoot all but one of my normal arrows. Pick up the ancient arrows and then warp quickly back to Talon Egg. Um, if you get the castle cutscene here, that's fine. Um, the run has to come to castle to do the boss rush anyway, so you're going to get the castle cutscene no matter what. Um, it's just that at this early stage, it's, you know, no need to wait for the cat, uh, no need to wait for the cutscene. Um, if the cutscene hasn't loaded yet, um, the castle map hasn't loaded, so you can just warp right away. Okay. Square first to the goddess statue. Um, we don't want the spirit orbs in our inventory, so we need to trade them in. And since we are going to get um, a lot of fairies, uh, we might as well use um, extra stamina here. Now, coming out of the goddess statue, um, you're going to get an auto save. But uh, since this is the save that I'm going to load into uh, right away, um, I'm going to just going to hard save uh, for safety. Uh, we're going to come to the clothes shop to do the first set of breaking slots because we also want a piece of armor for the setup. So 
I'm gonna do the arrow list setup. And um, we're gonna be using these items to break slots. I'm gonna be doing double duty with some of these items. Um, so specifically uh, the Endora Carrots, the Hylian Shrooms, the Hyrule Bass, and the Blue Nightshade. Um, we want to use these items to break eight slots. So um, I'm actually going to pick them up, uh, one each, and I'm going to just deposit them on the ground. Um, we're going to save those for later. Then back in my menu, I'm going to pick the four up again. I'm going to pick up the Silent Shroom as a check item. Um, by the way, the Silent Shroom was actually kind of RNG. Um, uh, in this run, like sometimes it appears on those hills, you can't always guarantee it. If if the silent troop doesn't appear, you just grab an apple or something. Um, okay, so I have five items: um, blue nightshade, Hyrule bass, Hylian shroom, and Dora carrot. And the silent shroom is my check item. So come over here, do the IST thing here, and that looks good. I hope. Uh, yeah, I had the check item there, so sell Endura Carrots, sell Hylian Shrooms, sell the Hyrule Bass, sell the Blue Nightshade. Okay, so that's four broken slots. Okay, I'm going to pick everything back up, pick up all of this stuff, and then we're going to do it again. Oops. Okay, so I don't know, bass here, three, four, five. Okay. And that should be good. Yep. Okay, so endure carrots. Fish. Shrooms. Okay, and I actually don't want the fairies. Um, in this round, I don't want to transfer the fairies uh, back over. Um, so I am actually just going to sell the fairies right now. Um, since I think this is this is a little faster than like eating them or uh, picking them up and throwing them on the ground. Okay. Now I want to pick up the Silent Shroom here just to have another item there. Um... I'm going to buy the Hylian Hood. It costs 60 rupees. Um, Endora Carrot sells for 30. So as long as you've used Endora Carrots in two rounds of breaking slots, you should have enough here. Okay. Uh, we're done in this shop. I'm going to run to the cookpot here. And just to fill out the back of our inventory uh, a little bit, uh, we're going to cook... Uh, two spicy sautéed peppers. Um, the spicy sautéed peppers are important um, to this setup in that they are a food with a status effect. So even if you eat um, a food, if you eat a food that gives you hearts and a status effect when you're at full health, the game doesn't like double check with you whether or not you want to eat it um, because it just assumes that you want the status effect. Um, if we use food that didn't give us status effect, we'd be, we'd be having to confirm every single time we eat, and that's a lot of extra menuing. Um, okay, so just to confirm, um, our, the back of our inventory now is uh, a piece of armor, four peppers, a silent shroom, uh, a steak, and two uh, spicy sautéed pepper meals. And those are the slots that are going to be transferred because we have eight broken slots. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, eight. So we want to transfer those back into the save that we made right after um, turning in the spirit orbs. Okay. Now back in this save... Um, we have those extra items, and um, we are now going to... So you see kind of some of the duped items here, um, duped food here. Uh, specifically pulling from this smaller stack of peppers, uh, we're going to 
cook two more. Okay. And uh, just to set up our inventory for later, we're going to eat um, this steak from... Specifically the steak from slot two. Okay, and that's just to prevent like more and more steak from like accumulating in our in our inventory. We just want to leave this one um, here. Okay, so after that, um, we're going to run over to this shop. Um, I like this merchant more than the one in the produce shop. Um, and the store just has a cleaner lay layout. Uh, you can just pick up things better. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to break four more slots. And specifically, we're going to use a blue nightshade. We're going to bl use blue nightshade, uh, this spicy pepper. Uh, we're going to use the silent shroom as a check item. And then we're going to use this Hylian shroom and the Hyrule bass. Okay. Um, so no depositing on the ground. We only need to break four more slots for a total of 12 just to make the, the save and just to lessen the amount of save and reloads we need to do later. Um, okay, so. Okay. Oh, that, that didn't look. Yeah, it didn't. There, um, that looks stuck to his hand. Oh, I messed up. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I actually, I want to use the silence room as a check item, so I don't need that. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, those are the items I want. Okay, I have the shield equipped. There we go. That's better. I don't know what I did wrong. Yeah. That should be good. <laughs> okay. So I'm selling this stack of peppers. Mm -hmm. These Hylene shrooms. Oh. The fish. Oh. And the blue nightshade. Oh. Oh. And then we're going to pick everything back up. Okay. And the main thing we want to... Um, make sure is that in this slot here, so I call this slot six, there are five in the top, this is slot number six, um, that this is something that is edible. Okay. Uh, meaning that if you click on A, there's an eat prompt here. So the only thing that would not qualify as being good here is if we had the blue nightshade there, because you can't eat the blue nightshade. Okay, so um, this item here, specifically in this slot, has to be edible. Okay. Um, and if we didn't, we've done everything right. Um, yeah, I can pick up another silent shroom. If we did everything right, we're going to come over here. And we're going to cook, uh, six more spicy peppers. And again, that's just to pad out the back of the inventory. So um, we need 60 food um, as part of the WMC setup. So we're going to be saving and reloading to duplicate uh, spicy peppers. And since we have 12 broken slots, um, we're going to be in each round duping the slate and the glider. And then at this point, we've cooked 10... Um, spicy pepper meals. Um, and those are the ones that are going to get reloaded every single time. Um, the next step is we want to get the um, star invalid slot. And um, first I'm going to just re-equip um, some things before um, we save. But to get the star invalid slot uh, is a little tricky. Um, so You'll notice that um, we bought the armor and then we reload it into a save that did not have the armor tab discovered. So you get this kind of weird, like empty tab here. Like normally, if you haven't discovered the armor tab, um, you could just tap right through it. 
Um, but in this case, uh, the tab is sort of here, but not showing anything. So the armor is in the inventory actually here. Um, we just can't see it. And that allows us to activate something called star and valid slot. Um, one way that I found um, that generally works to activate it is to throw your weapon on the ground, pause, and then try to tab through. Oh, okay. So there we go. Okay. So um, I did that too quickly, but basically what I did was um, I tried to tab through and then I noticed that the cursor had landed in the bottom left, like kind of off where the grid would be. And then I paused and unpaused twice and then tabbed to the, uh, and then on the second pause, tab to the right. And I get the cursor floating above the star like this. Um, that's what star invalid slot is. I personally don't understand like much of the theory behind it, but we kind of needed to see it there. Um, maybe I'll, I'll uh, link um, a video explaining um, hold prompt entanglement and star invalid slot. Uh, that's where I learned learned it from. So maybe it'd be helpful to you if, if this sequence didn't make sense. Um, so once we have that, uh, we're going to save and reload. And at this point, because of star invalid slot, you'll kind of notice something weird. So when you go to save, the cursor is not here on screen yet, right? Um, like neither save, neither the options save or cancel are highlighted. Um, to get the cursor on the save, you press D-pad right. And then when you come back to the system menu, the cursor is not here either. Um, so you have to press D-pad right again um, to get it to show up. Then we can load. Cursor is not here. Press D-pad right. Cursor is not here. Press D-pad right. And this is going to... Uh, this this behavior is going to persist until we close and reopen the game. Okay, so we're here. Um, now we're going to go through two rounds of saving and reloading just to duplicate the food in the back of our inventory. Um, the fast way to um, ensure that game data is synced and that the food would duplicate correctly is just to open and close your quick menu. Um, for this demonstration purposes, I'll just move over to the food menu and just show you um, what's exactly happened. Um, so there were 11 food inventory. That's the steak all the way to the end here. And then like the last 10 slots, which were the spicy sauteed peppers were duplicated. Okay, um, nothing's happened with this. We still have the Hylian hood there. Okay, so we sync game data. Now we're going to save and reload with the weird menu glitch. So every single round of saving and reloading, we're duplicating 10 different food. Okay, again, in a normal run, I would just open and close a quick menu to sync the game data, but for demonstration purposes, I'll kind of show you that we do have more food. Um, right now we have 31, okay? Um, there's 20 on a page, um, plus 11 here, so there's 31. I'm going to save and reload until we, so that we have 41. Okay. Once we have 41 food, um, this is where things get really interesting, I guess. Um, so first, I'm going to show you the food menu. So we have 20, 20, and 1 here. Um, we're going to sort the food menu. And that's going to put the seared steak towards the end. And um, we're eventually going to put the WMC meal right next to it. Um, but first, uh, the WMC meal requires three roasted Endura carrots. We don't have roasted Endura carrots right now. We're just plain Endura carrots. Uh, one fairy and one um, Hyrule bass. So um, let's make the roasted Endura 
carrots. Um, just a little bit of an optimization. We could run over to um, that campfire and toss the Endora carrots down. But um, to just save that running, if you just light a uh, an arrow, you can light them on fire, and then we're going to shoot the arrow away because um, we want actually zero arrows in this slot. Okay, so now we have three roasted Endura carrots. Um, before I cook the meal, though, um, what I want to do is uh, I want to delete this arrow slot here, and I want to get rid of the Hylian hood. Now, um, first, let me show you how to delete the arrow slot. Normally, even if you have zero arrows, the arrow slot is still um, is still here. Um, but we're going to use prompt entanglement to eat this arrow slot. And the reason why we needed to drain the slot of, or the reason why we needed to get rid of all the arrows is, um, I think eating the arrow slot, um, eating the arrows when there are. Um, trying to eat the slot when there are still arrows there um, only decreases your arrow count. Um, so um, we need zero arrows here for the slot to disappear. Now that I'm saying that out loud, that might not exactly be true. There might be some details I'm getting wrong about that. So um, maybe someone watching this can, can let me know. Anyway, so to eat this arrow slot, what we're going to do is we're going to page uh, four to the right. So one, two, three, four. Uh, we're going to come to the third row and the fifth column. And I'll go through the input slowly first. I'm going to press um, right stick left, up, um, right stick right, left. Let me be a little more clear. Right stick left, D-pad up, right stick right, D-pad left. All right, so let me do that fast. Okay, it's not very fast. You just have to like kind of keep up a decent rhythm. And so now um, what you'll notice is that the cursor is kind of off screen. Um, it's not on the main grid here. Um, so the next step is I'm gonna page two to the left. Okay, now you're gonna notice that the the cursor is somewhere way off to the right there. It's floating above the, the Sheikah slate. And I'm going to press D-pad left once. And the next set of inputs is D-pad right, D-pad left, D-pad left, D-pad right. Okay. Let me go through it slowly first. Um, so it's going to be D-pad right, D-pad left, D-pad left, D-pad right. Now the cursor is not going to be here when I do it quickly, but that's sort of the inputs. So I've kind of messed that up now, so I need to redo the whole thing. So, um, wait, was I on the right page? I was not on the right page. All right, so one, two, three, four. Okay, I need to be on the first page of food. I remember that. So I'm going to do the right stick left, D pad up, right stick right, D pad left inputs. Page two to the left. D-pad left until the cursor is on um, one of the cells in the fifth column. And right, left, left, right. Okay. So now the cursor is hovering over um, the Hyrule Bass. And again, um, that's why it's important that this... Uh, it, it's important that this particular item have an eat prompt. Because we're going to use this cursor and the prompt from this item to eat the arrows. So now that the um, cursor is floating over the fish. I'm going to go to the system menu and come back. Okay. And you'll notice that now in the bottom right, it says Hyrule Bass. So now the game has like recognized that I am hovering over Hyrule Bass, whereas before it might not have. And now I'm going to go three to the left. One, two, three. Okay. And now, even though it's off screen, you'll notice that the cursor is hovering over arrows, but the, the dialog box telling me what item I'm selected is still Hyrule Bass. So now if I press A, I'll get the eat prompt from the Hyrule Bass. And if I choose eat, okay, you cannot recover any more hearts because it thinks it's Hyrule Bass, but I'm going to eat anyway. 
and my arrow slot is gone. All right. So that gives me one arrow slot um, where I where I used to have two, and that's going to make the corruption steps um, a lot easier later. Um, next, I am going to do the same thing with armor. Okay. Technically, I could just run to a shop and sell this armor. I think optimally, it's faster to save myself the running and just use um, uh, prompt entanglement to, to eat the Hylian hood. So uh, for this, I'm going to go same thing. Um, well, I think I only need... Well, I'm going to go four to the uh, four to the right, and I'm going to go into the second row, column five. Hylian Hood is in row one, so the process always kind of starts in the row right below it. Um, so I'm going to do the D-pad right, uh, or right stick right, D-pad up, uh, right stick, right stick left, D-pad up, right stick right, D-pad left. Okay, two more to the left. Um, D-pad left to get the cursor back there, then right, left, left, right. Okay. Um, now the game says this is spicy sauteed peppers. Um, I'm, I'm going to still go to the system menu and come back just to be sure that the game has selected spicy sauteed peppers. Then I'm going to go three to the left. And it's hovering over the Hylian hood. I'm going to eat it. So you can see, like, w once, um... Once you become familiar with the inputs, how just like eating the hood is going to be faster than like running to a merchant and selling the hood. Although, like if you're doing this and you don't want to like bother with this step, um, you can just run to the vendor. But it's it's really the, the exact same inputs as um, eating the arrows, only like shifted one row up. Okay, after all that, um, we need to actually cook our meal. Um, so, uh, I need to hold these roasted Endura carrots. Normally you can't hold food, but with prompt entanglement you can. So, I'm going to go to, uh, two pages to the left here to start this one off. Um, start in row two because carrots are in row one. And then I'm going to do the right stick left, D-pad up, right stick right, D-pad left. Okay. Um... Then I'm going to go, uh, let's see, I can go, let me try this. I can go one to the right, I think. Yeah, I can go one to the right and will this work? Uh, let's try. Um, one to the right, cursor's floating off there in the middle of nowhere. And I'm going to press D-pad left and bring the cursor back. But this time I'm going to move it to column one. So one before the... Um, one before, what do I want to say? The, the column before the column that, um, roasted and dory carrots is in. And then this input is different. This is, this is going to be right stick, right, D-pad, right, right stick, left, D-pad, left. So let me go through the inputs there. I'm going to go through the input slowly. Right stick, right, D-pad, right, right stick, left, D-pad, right. Okay, that's the sequence that I'm going to go through. So, one, two, three, um, let's go two to the left. Okay. So, there's that. Um, I actually think it makes sense for me to go two to the left instead of one to the right. So, I'm going to go two to the left, right? Yeah. Bring the cursor to column one, and then do right stick, right, D-pad, right, right stick, left, D-pad, right. Okay, now the cursor is hovering over there. It's over one of the materials, which can be held. So I'm going to go into the system menu and come back. And it's hovering over a fairy. And then I'm going to go three to the right. Right. And right now it's selected the roast and dura carrots, but it still thinks it's on a fairy. So now I'm going to press X. And... A three times to hold the three roasted enduri carrots. Um, now I'm gonna leave the menu, come back, 
Um, and this is the only way to get back to the materials um, tab. I don't think you can tab away from food once you're like doing this crazy whole thing. And now I want one fairy and one Hyrule bass. And I'm going to go and cook. Okay. So now that I've cooked, uh, let's see what I've done here. Um, okay. I have the seared steak, which is my stackable food. The fish skewer, which is my WMC meal. Okay, it holds sort of like the code for um, the souped up um, bow and everything. Um, and now I am going to um, set up the rest of my inventory. Okay, because I don't actually want two shields. I only want one shield, and I want the undamaged Boko shield that I know has five durability on it. And I don't really want two bows either. Um, I just want the uh, the Phrenic bow, um, and I want Ancient Arrows equipped. And then I want Weapon 2 equipped. Okay. All right, so now I have 42 meals. Let's save with a weird menu. And load with the weird menu. And 42 food is going to become 52 food. Okay. All right, so here's what I want to happen. I want to set up a situation where um, this meal here, which is my WMC meal, can't fit into the food tabs. Okay, you can have maximum 60 food here. Um, and so I want on, on load um, the seared steak to go into this last slot here and then the fish skewer to fail to load because it would be taking up the 61st slot. Um, and because I have 12 broken slots, I'm duplicating 10 meals every single time. So I want the seared steak to land right here where my cursor is right now. I want it to be in slot 50 so that on reload it goes to slot 60. And then the fish skewer tries to go to slot 61. Okay. So right now it's one one slot too far. So I'm going to eat a meal. And I'm going to eat a meal that um, has a confirmation prompt just so that I, I don't get it later. Um, and I can do... I'm going to... We're going to be eating all of these meals. Um, so eating that one right now um, kind of lets me eat the rest of the meals in rhythm later. I mean, we want to think about that. Um, okay, so I'm eating, that's all I'm doing, we're doing in this round. Um, we're going to save and reload. All right. Okay, uh, still a few rounds uh, left before we're there. Okay, so now we have 60 meals. At the end is the seared steak, and the fish skewer to the right of it is nowhere to be seen. Um, there's some over here, okay, but um, those were transferred in. The important steak now is this one. Because that fish, fish skewer to the right of it wasn't able to load, the game kind of accidentally writes the data from the fish skewer onto the seared steak. So right now the seared steak is my WMC meal, oddly enough. Okay. And I want to move the steak all the way to the front. Um, but instead of just eating everything, um, I'm just going to save and reload uh, one more time um, because saving and reloading will move it closer to the front and then it will also put some meals in behind it and that's going to be helpful um, for the rest of my setup. Okay, so um, first we're just going to clear out um, the meals with confirmation prompts just so we have like a smooth uh 
continuous spicy sauteed pepper pages. Um, and yeah, then we are going to save and reload. Okay, save, load. Okay, almost there. We're gonna clear out our inventory a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is take out all the materials that are not the fairy and drop them on the ground. Okay, so we just have the fairy materials and then we're gonna eat a lot of stuff here. By the way, um, at the end of this, I have like 61 meals showing I don't know why I get another food slot in this case, but who knows. Um, my WMC meal, by the way, is this one. Okay, that's the important one. Um, so I want to eat meals. I want to leave two in front of the steak. All right, so I'm going to eat everything else. Okay, I'm going to leave two in front. Um, that's really important for offset and spacing for the corruption part because um, I want 500 seared sticks. I don't just want one. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave two in front and then I'm going to leave six behind. Okay, um, so, so two in front, six behind. It doesn't have to be these six. Uh, it could be any six, but um, I use the two immediately in front and the six immediately behind just because it's a little, a little easier to tell that I have the correct number. And then I'm going to eat everything else. Okay. So let's hit A a bunch of times. I'll clear everything out. I'm going to eat this on the weird fourth page of food. Okay. All right. So, um, let's double check. Okay, so we have our key items. Those aren't going anywhere. We have food, two in front of the stake, six behind the stake. Um, all we have are fairies in the materials slots. We have no armor. Um... We have one shield, the undamaged Bogo shield. It's still shining. Arrows, Frenic bow. Okay, one bow. Two weapons, and specifically the weapon in slot two is the one that's equipped. Um, and it's important, if your two weapons are tree branch and woodcutter's axe, that it's the woodcutter's axe that's in slot two. Um, because the tree branch only has four durability, um, so it only gives us 400 of something. And that's that's going to cause problems. So make sure something with more than five durabilities in slot two, and that's that's equipped. Um, so from this configuration, we're going to save, and then we're going to come back here, and we're going to um, clear things out a little bit more. Um, we're actually going to leave just five meals here for the reload. Um, because then that way um, we're going to go down to, I think, uh, that way we have an inventory size of 13 with 12 broken slots. And that's important for this next step. So we're going to eat one, two, three, four. Okay, leaving five meals. Okay, then... Um, kind of standing away from the materials I dropped, just so that I don't um, accidentally pick those up again. I am going to drop the shield, drop the bow, drop both weapons. Okay. Um, then I'm going to pick everything back up. Okay. So one, two, three, four. And um, you'll notice something weird here, uh, which is that uh, if, I tr if I tab left, from my tree branch, I see a Boko shield. I'm going to unequip that. If I keep tabbing left, I see a woodcutter's axe. I'm going to unequip that. And if I tab left again, I see a phrenic bow. I'm going to unequip that. Um, and then I see key items, and then my five meals. 
Um, those might not be in the same order. It all depends on which order you pick them up off the ground. But um, right now, all of these, I, um, all of these equipment are to the right of key items, which means, um, and th that has to do with like weird M count shenanigans when you have a uh, when M count is really low. Um, but they should all be nothing. Nothing here should be equipped. So you just tab through and make sure everything's unequipped. Um, and then. Um, once you have all of that, uh, we're going to reload. Okay. Once you load into the save, um, the first thing you need to do is just pause the game. You know, don't quick menu, don't do anything else. Just pause the game and save. Okay, um, behind the scenes, um, we're corrupting ancient arrows, we're corrupting fairies, and we're corrupting the stake, right? And we want to save that to, to capture those values um, before the game has a chance to correct itself. Once we've saved and locked those into our hard save, um, we're going to reload, but we want to make sure that um, our current inventory doesn't... Um, our current inventory doesn't interfere with any of that stuff. So uh, we're going to eat the seared steak because we want um, we don't want any of the steak that's going to be loaded in from the save to be uh, to fail to load. And then we're going to take these two fairies and then we're going to drop them on the ground because it's faster than um, faster than trying to eat them because the game will try to get us to confirm that we actually want to eat them. Okay. Everything else can stay the same, and we're going to reload this save. Okay. Whew. And we just have one, two more steps. Okay. So now, um, when we go to the save, you'll notice that we have 4,400 ancient arrows. Uh, we have 999 fairies, and we have 500 stake. Okay. Um, at this point, we want to set up the stake so that is it's in food slot one, and then um, we want 999 fairies to the left of it. We don't want the shield. Uh, we just want the. Then we want the arrows and the frenetic bow. Okay. So first, we're going to. Eat the 12 um, spicy peppers that are in front of the steak. Um, the ones behind it uh, doesn't really matter. You can kind of just uh, leave them there. Um, actually, it's kind of important to leave them there, so don't touch them. Um, and then we have fairies. Uh, the shield will get in the way. So we're going to drop the shield. And then, yeah, that should be it. We should have the Phrenic Bow, Ancient Arrows, Fairies, and the Stake. So what's going to happen is that on reload, the Stake is going to be here in slot 1. And then the game's going to try to um, bring in the stack of Stake from the save file. And when it, try when it goes to try to combine the stack from, or when it tries to load in the stack from the save file, it notices that we already have 500 stake. So that stake is going to fail to load. And then the game, I think, I think this is the theory about how it works, starts searching to the left for things that it could put that data onto. And it won't do it for fairies because there are too many fairies. It won't do it to the ancient arrows because we have too many ancient arrows. It'll finally land on the phrenic bow and it'll write the data from the stake, which has our WMC meal data, onto the phrenic bow. And then the game's going to interpret that as modifiers for the phrenic bow. Go figure. Okay. So, a couple more steps. We're going to save. 
And then we are going to unequip this bow. This bow is actually going to get transferred, um, which would be nice because we have, we're have we going to have two bows um, where we only had one. Um, but uh, the one on the save file is already equipped, so we don't want to get into a messy situation where uh, two bows are equipped. Okay, and now we're going to reload. Okay, and here's the moment of truth. We're going to pause, go over, and here's our brand new Omega Bow. Plus 120 attack, 10 shot. Um, it has zoom too, um, but Frenic Bow already had zoom, so that's not really a, a, an additional feature. If you did this with a bow that, um, if you did this with a bow that didn't have zoom, it would give it zoom. Um, yeah, and there's our 500 meal and and everything. Okay. Uh, now we have one more step for um, all Kelton medals purposes, which is that. Uh, so the Phrenic Bow only has 45 durability, um, so and there are 84 mini bosses we have to kill. So it'd be nice if we had two. Um, so we're gonna dupe this bow. Okay, and that's going to be the last thing we do. So we're going to um, equip this, uh, make sure it updates in the overworld, and then we're going to use a similar... Um, we're going to use Prompt Entanglement um, to dupe this bow. And the way we're going to do that is, again, um, we need to activate uh, this slot, and it's going to be, this, it's gonna be the sim a similar... Um, it's going to be a similar setup to when we held the Endura Carrot. So we're going to go four to the right. And then we're going to do that input. The right stick left, D-pad up, right stick right, D-pad left. Um, go two to the left. Come to column one. And then do that input. The right stick right. D-pad right, right stick left, D-pad right. Then go three to the left. Right. Now it's hovering over the Omega Bow, remember? Um, we're going to go to System tab and back. Right, so it's highlighting the Phrenic Bow. And then we're going to go two to the right. Or three to the right? Yeah, three to the right. And then we are going to equip this nothing. Okay. And what's going to happen is the game equips it in the overworld, but not in the menu. So if I unpause and then pause, it updates the bow in the overworld to be the Omega bow. But here in menu, I still have the plain Phrenic bow um, equipped. So if I drop this now in the overworld, I'm going to drop a brand new Omega bow. So now I have two Omega Bows. So that's 90 durability. Um, and if I ever wanted more than that, say I missed a bunch of shots, um, I could just do it again. Um, because Prompt Entanglement is going to persist um, through save and reloads um, until you close the game. Um, you're only You only need to close the game Actually, you don't ever need to close the game, right? Because even after Ganon, you can just reload. It'll dupe a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but it won't be that important. Um, so you'll have prompt entanglement for the rest of the game. Okay? And after all of that set up, right? You have like two nothing weapons. They're fine. Um, you have two Omega Bows. We don't have a shield though, um, and we need a shield for BLSS. And but luckily, here's a pot lid that Coco is going to give us. All right. So that's kind of why I wanted the Boko shield from Plateau, um, because I wasn't go the pot lid from Plateau that we normally get. There's no guarantee that's going to have five durability or more. 
Um, and then this particular pot lid, um, I wanted to be the shield for the rest of the game. All right, so that's WMC. This video has been going on for a really long time. Um, it's taken me a long time to describe it, but um, in terms of just doing the inputs um, fast and confidently, um, from the goddess statue to the end, I've timed myself to be to for it to be like um, eleven or twelve minutes, and then sort of the gathering part is like a few more minutes on top of that. So this whole thing can be done really fast. I just took a really long time in describing it. So. Hopefully that interests you. Hopefully you have fun playing around with these Omega bows. And if you're interested in helping route all Kilton medals, um, do the setup yourself and, you know, play around with it. Okay. Uh, that's it.